Let us try an example on the initial sizing. You are asked to propose a suitable section as a pre-stressed concrete beam having the following specifications. The beam has a span of 12 meters. There is no limit in terms of the overall depth and the maximum width will be 2.4 meter. The member is subjected to an UDL GK 7.2 kN per meter and QK of 12 kN per meter. The concrete at the transfer stage is 26.7 N per mm square and at the surface stage will be 40 N per mm square. In terms of the losses, the alpha is taken as 0 0.9 while the beta is 0 0.75. It is given that the beam is a pre-tension beam and it is meant for full pre-stressing where tensile limits at the service state will be equals to 0 newton per mn square. You may pause the video for a while for you to work out the solution. As discussed in the previous videos, for the initial sizing of the sections, it is built on the basis of the four main stress equations which is derived to calculate the stress in the member. These equations are further derived in order to become two equations for initial sizing. Therefore, we're going to adopt these two equations for us to determine the minimum Z top and Z bottom for the sections. In the equations, we will require information like the M maximum and M minimum, beta and alpha, gamma inferior and gamma superior, FCK and FCI. The alpha and beta are given. The load factor gamma superior and gamma inferior can be referred from the table, which is this table. The beam is a pre-tension beam. Therefore, the gamma superior will be equals to 1.05 and gamma inferior will be 0.95. The FCI and FCKs are given. We will need to compute the FCTM. Based on the equation here, the FCTM are meant for the transfer stage. Therefore, we will use the FCI to compute the FCTM. Substitute FCI into the equation here. You obtain the FCTN equals to 2.68. This equation is meant for the concrete strength less than 50. If the concrete strength is more than 50, another equation for SCTN will be used, which is this one. Next, in the equation here, you will need to acquire the M maximum and M minimum. The M maximum is meant for the service state, while the M minimum is meant for the transfer stage. The M minimum is computed from the self weight of the member, while the M maximum will be the summations of the self weight, GK and QK. With that, we need to first consider the self weight of the member. However, at this stage, you still do not know what size of the member is being used. You may first simply assume a self weight of the member, which is later going to be checked for a reasonable estimation of the Z top minimum and Z bottom minimum. In this case, I assume the self weight of the member is 12 kN per meter. The service load will be the summations of GK and QK. Since that we are still in the stage of the serviceability limit state, the factor of safety for the GK and QK will be 1.0, which is the summations of 7.2 plus 12. 
that gives you 19.2 now you need to calculate the UDL at the transfer and the service the UDL at the transfer will be purely on the self weight therefore the W is 12 kN per meter as the UTL at the service will be the self weight plus GK and QK all this with the factor of safety of 1.0 it is basically the summations of 12 plus 19.2 that give you 31.2 now you can calculate the maximum moment and minimum moment acting on the member the member is simply supported therefore you use m equals to wl square per 8 the l is given as 12 meters w will be the numbers that you generated here this give you m minimum and m maximum here now that you have all the necessary value for the equations substitute all the numbers into the equations you will get the z top minimum and z bottom minimum as listed here your next step now is to propose a beam section in this case i propose the size of the beam sections as given here the equation state that the maximum width of the member is 2.4 meter therefore i make it 2.4 meter in terms of the width of the section this will be the flame part and this will be the wet part at the time that you are proposing the dimensions of the section you have no idea whether your dimensions is too large or too small it is only after you calculate the z top and z bottom to be compared with the minimum z top and the minimum z bottom that you calculate from initial sizing therefore you will have to go through a process of geometrical properties construct a table here for you to compute the area the centroid the second moment of inertia and the section modulus consider this as part 1 part 2 and part 3 you will acquire the areas as listed here the summations of all the areas it will be the total cross-sectional area of the section next you need to determine the centroid of each part of the element as refers to the soffit of the beam then you use the a to be multiplied y to get the numbers in this third column summations of the a y you get this value this value is later divided by the a in order for you to get the centroid y bottom it is based on the formula given here the centroid phi 3 through is meant for the distance from the centroid to the soffit of the beam for the y top it is measured on top of the centroid to the top of the beam which is 218 mm the summations of these two values should theoretically equal to this next you need to compute the moment of inertia based on this equation this will be meant for the moment of inertia for each individual part calculate the dy which is the distance between the centroid of each part with the centroid of the entire section having the a to be multiplied with the square of dy you obtain a dy square remember that the dy here needs to be squared the last column here is obtained by having the i plus a dy square the summations of all these value you will get this which is the second moment of inertia of the section
Now you proceed with the calculations of the section modulus. It is given by the equation here, which is the second moment of inertia divided by the centroid. When I is divided by the Y bottom, you will get Z bottom. When I is divided by Y top, you will get Z top. Based on the Z top and Z bottom calculated, check with the Z top and Z bottom minimum which you obtain from the initial sizing. You will find that the Z top and Z bottom that you have obtained is greater than the minimum requirement. Although the Z top is significantly larger than the minimum requirement, but the Z bottom here is similar to the Z bottom minimum, slightly larger. Therefore, the proposed section is acceptable. If you wish to go for a more economical design, you can adjust further the dimensions of the section so that you acquire the Z top and Z bottom just slightly larger than the minimum requirement. You could even propose these sections in another shapes so that you can readjust the portions of the Z top and Z bottom so that both Z top and Z bottom minimum is just slightly smaller than the one that you obtain from your section. There is one more step that you need to do. Remember that initially you assume the self weight as 12 kN per meter. This was an assumed number because at this stage you do not know the size of the member. Now after you have proposed the dimensions of the member and you realize that your Z top and Z bottom is actually greater than the minimum requirement, you may recalculate the self weight of the member. The calculated self weight is less than the assumed value. That means the self weight is not underestimated and you are quite confident that the proposed sections will pass when your Z top and Z bottom is greater than the minimum requirement. In the case that your self weight is slightly larger than the assumed value, there is still chances that the sections will be adequate because your Z top and Z bottom is obviously larger than the minimum requirement. You do not have to change the dimension at this stage because at the end of the day, you will have to do a proper checking in terms of the stress limit. The initial sizing is just to provide a guideline for you to propose a suitable section. The minor variations in terms of the estimated load, particularly in terms of the self weight of the member, can easily be compensated by the adjustment of P and E and X tendon profile.